Perché non funziona? Cos'è il nome? We're excited about this move for uh, February 7th, 2024, an athletic signing day, a uh, pretty significant day today, and I'll explain why here in a minute. We're going to go kind of order of today's events. We kind of plan you know, the picture uh, opportunities that will be, and just kind of how things are going to go in order. So uh, I'll, I'll say a few words, just kind of an introduction type stuff, then we'll get into uh, interviews with athletes, where we're going, and what uh, athletic events we're going to pursue. Uh, after that, I'm going to pass the number for each one of the student athletes. And they're going to give you a 15 to 30 seconds just about why they chose where they did. Um, and it could be for a variety of reasons and different angles, different stuff. It's just up to them. Because obviously there's stars today, and I'm sure you'd love to hear from them, um, even if it's for a short amount of time. Uh, after we have the athletes coach come up um, from the respective program that the athletes are, are signing for. Um, meet the high school coaches. They'll say a few words. The big man told a story uh, just about the student athletes. Then we will have uh, our program signing. I'll give everyone kind of a build up a countdown, get in position for uh, picture uh, opportunities, and then I'll give them a countdown and they'll sign uh, their letters and do all uh, sorts of angles and pictures, whatever you want to. Then we have the two backdrops when we're done. Uh, again, feel free to, to mingle. And then we have cookies somewhere uh, as well. Backdrops, use those for any sort of pictures and um, communication that you want to as well. And then we'll, we'll be done. So that's kind of the, the order of events and how we're going to do things. Uh, so again, welcome. It's an exciting to be here. It, it, it's interesting because before we get to the meeting of the letter of intent, the National Signing Day, the significance of it. Uh, I, I was reflecting on some things, and, and, and one of the first things I started thinking about is just the, the role of the high school coach and the high school support network versus the college support network. And in high school, you know, we, we do a lot to develop our programs and the pipeline and, and make sure the kids are developed. Um, but, but inevitably, in a public high school, you're, you're kind of involved in the pain of your debt. Well, in college, Jobs depend on the hand that's being played by those coaches. So those coaches go out and they seek the hand and the colors in their hand as these two methods. And what's so awesome about that is we had a really exciting day where before we were in our seat, you know, days that are our children and evolving and in the times we can do this. Uh, we only had 16 student athletes in that one, 14 in the day. There's been 30 Riverside student athletes that have been sought out by college and university coaches whose jobs are on the line based on who they pick, who they recruit, who they bring in. And, and with that, so this is the most we've ever had. We still have another um, ceremony later this spring. So, what that tells me is things are good here, and it's a thanks to obviously the families, administration, the support networks, the teachers, the coaches, uh, the families, the teammates, uh, just tremendous jobs. So I think everybody's going to give everyone a round of applause right now. So this is a good job. This is a good job. Next. Why today is a big deal beyond what I just referenced. Signing day is, there's a couple periods throughout the year where things now become a legally binding contract. You hear about committing, you hear about getting offered, you hear all of that stuff is great and whatnot, but it doesn't mean a whole lot is just going to be blunt in today's day and age. What means something is when this national letter of intent is signed and submitted to the college or university, it is now a legally binding contract between a student athlete and the family and the college or university. Prior to signing day, colleges can pull thousands back, pull offers back. Athletes can decommit, can change thoughts, can go in a certain different directions, and it happens for a variety of reasons. It used to be just a handful of years ago that once you committed as an athlete, you kind of were untouchable. 
You know, you can make the school C, the school is A, B, and D, kind of new. All right, we're done. He's committed. She's committed. Uh, we do what? Not the case of the hill. It is open season. And especially in the sense of, well, I can't imagine what these, these, these student athletes have gone through during this whole process. You can have to today. Because this is not a stop trying to get them to flip, to be committed, to do all that stuff. And, and they've got you know, a lot of decisions to make. So, so today is a hugely significant day in terms of choosing colleges and finally now signing. Uh, because now it's leaving by the contract between both parties. So that's, uh, that's a significant piece of today and, and, and why it's so special and why we're obviously celebrating it. Um, and it's just going to be to be celebrated. Okay, we're going to hear now this morning. We're going to see some of our athletes who are not quite the order. Um, starting with Antonio, who's very sweet, which will go right down the line. Uh, Antonio, who's going to be signing with Texas University to play football. Do you want to be there? Are you there? Do you want to be 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 there? Gary Paul, University of Mount Union for football. Diane Kirks, the Ohio State University for football. Evan Phillips, Lake Erie College, cross country and track and field. Savannah Lane, Rochester University, basketball. Michael Lane, University of Mount Union, football. Brandon McBride, University of Mount Union, football. Matthew Richardson, Iowa College, baseball. Kelly Smith, St. Louis College, Lacrosse. Queen St. Clair, Edinburgh University, Lacrosse. Amy Slade, Tiffany University, Lacrosse. Brittany Dixon, University of Mount Union, Lacrosse. And Isaiah Walker, University of Mount Union, Football. Excuse me, guys, I'm going to I chose Kent State University because it gave me an incredible opportunity to just play both the sports I love, pay for my college, and it's local, so my family will be able to come watch me. because uh, overall, it's a good athletic program as well as academically. I chose Mountain because it's a small, close to college with a great football program and a great culture. I chose the Ohio State University because I feel like it's going to be the best fit for you as a person on and off the field. And I want to shout out my mom, shout out my brother, shout out the guys over here. I chose it here because for one it's close, like really close to home, and then um, also it has a great accounting program. Um, I chose Rochester University because I love the campus, um, they have a good basketball program, and overall I felt like it was a good fit for me. Visit. It just started at home, and the best good for me. I'm um, ashamed to play with some of my teammates again, who's just talking about so. I chose Mount Union. I love the campus, the coaches, the people. I academically had exactly what I wanted, and get to play with the guys again, so. Uh, I chose Hiram College because I had a connection on the campus, and I felt it was the best opportunity to change as a club person and player. I chose St. Vincent College because we fell in love with the campus and the lacrosse team. I chose Edinburgh University because it's the first university that made me feel like that was home and I love the academics, the people, the community, and just everything about the school. Um, I chose Tiffany University because I had a really good connection with the coach and the teammates um, when I went for my visit, and I'm just super excited to learn and grow for the next four years. 
I chose my union because I connected good with the coaches and I get to play with another teammate. I chose my union because it was a perfect fit. It felt like home. I get to play with my teammates one more time. Coach the manager, you have this reaction. We talked about the season about that stuff, 
you know, it's time to continue to evaluate our guys coming back. And Gabe Hall, I mean, again, this is a tremendous compliment because, you know, I'm not sure you ever, ever realized it, but Gabe's one of those guys that you couldn't miss in the weight room because of his work ethic. He wasn't loud, he wasn't flashy, he wasn't putting up the absolute most weight, you know, he sort of was a strong, tough individual, but he's just one of those guys that stood out. He just, he just, he just popped. And it's all kind of like, he's going to mock something. But like, like, like that guy, if he just keeps attacking it, you know, he may not be starter at the moment or, or whatever else, but you know, if he just continues to do what he's doing, and he, it just every day, go in there and you see Gabe Hall grinding and getting after it. Doesn't care if he's not the strongest or whatever, but just his work ethic and how he approach things uh, were extremely impressive. I mean, it, it, that's a, a major trait and characteristic, you know, associated with you as a as a person, as a as a young man competitor. Man, good for you. You're, you're gonna do things, man. So, game on. Don Perks. All right, Don. Uh, Don came to us this year. Um, you know, we, we, we had uh, Dez here, uh, we love Dez. His brother, he came to play with his brother um, his senior year. So it's been, it's been less than a year. So in terms of you know, major stories and whatnot, there's not a thousand of them just based on, you know, uh, lack of time and whatnot together. But here's just a, a couple of couple things in mind. And a lot of things actually in here, um, we actually told this story to him as well. Uh, he was asking us, Coach, you know, give me one of your favorite stories about Don. And, um, you know, we were just talking as part of his visit. And, and so we said, Don, so, so a couple of things that really stood out with me, and I want to share something that, that Larry Johnson, his position coach, said when he came to visit as well. Uh, but Don wasn't in the room, he was just kind of uh, Coach Johnson and myself. But real quick, so Don comes in, he comes in in late summer. He transfers, he's been with us all off season. I mean, it, it is minimal. And obviously, some of the guys know him because obviously, uh, of Daz and hanging out with Daz and so they cross paths and whatnot. Um, but so, so you know, that coach is kind of the dynamics, the chemistry of your team and your program and, and whatnot. You're fitting in with the, this guy who's, you know, got some, some big time novels already and, and we're excited. We've got, we've got a, a very strong group coming back and, and, and it, it, I think it was less than a week. I, I didn't write it down. I wish I would have the time because there was a study kind of almost like in behavioral science. But Don comes in, and he's with that extremely strong and talented group. Like we, we as much as I've seen in class, I mean, it is a tremendous group of as, as seen by the guys sitting up here right now. And he comes in, and I think it was like day five of our workout or practice or whatnot. And, and sure enough, Don Kirk is in the middle of breaking everyone down. Like it, it took him less than a week for the guys to embrace him and for the, the guys not only to embrace him, but say, hey, Don, yeah, go ahead. You, you can step in as well because, you know, you win. Uh, we see that and we respect that. And so, so that kind of goes both ways in terms of major respect and, and what was, um, you know, super impressive on the ball. I don't care what he did on the field or, or what the potential was at all. Like, that didn't matter. It was, it was those type of things that, like, right away, it, you, you knew you had to die. So, Coach Johnson, now, fast forward, why is it the field off? Like, like Don actually he came from Austin and picked Ohio State late, late, late in the game. And uh, they were off until he made his, his, his official visit, you know, a handful of weeks before today. And uh, Coach Johnson said, we're not off of him until he gets down to Columbus and he interacts with our people. He goes, we're going to see how he interacts with our coaching staff. We're going to check a lot of the boxes and he'll see him at camps and all that stuff. And he goes, Coach Boyd, he said, well, we are not off on this guy until he comes down and we see him in person in the rest. And if you get the Ohio State fans, the Ohio State is the term is affectionately used, um, especially in football circles. They've got a lot of dudes coming back on defense. A lot of dudes are in this position. And Chris I said, we have to get him in the room with all dudes and see if, if what they thought of him. You can see through guys pretty easily once you get, you know, the, your teammates around and you see what they go. And it was like, coach, do it to a man. Like, Wow, like our, our, our guys and our code, like we have breaks down. Like, like, like you made me back and sure enough, you got your offer, you got your offer, and, and that's a testament to who you are. And, uh, you know, obviously it's not going to be an easy road, it's not going to be for anybody, but, uh, 
you know, Don, I'm saying, what's the guy you had your own? We know you're also going to do huge things, and we, we can't wait to follow that. Don Curtis.
Yes, yes, yes. Well, the thing is, we're coming for you, man. So, we need to hear the kids and whatnot. And uh, so, we're going to get So, we're going to get some strong discussions back and forth, positives and negatives and, and everything else. And, and then we started observing the work a little bit more on the practice field of what we're doing. And the, the focus of the practice field of what we're doing is the the focus and seriousness and questions that were coming out of his mouth about what was going on and things that he was inquisitive about. It was like nothing we had ever seen from a freshman. It was so he had the physical tools, but mentally he was ready to go. And, and obviously, I you know it comes from an athletic family and, and, and that's a huge part of it also. Um, like a lot of these student athletes up here. But, uh, but really, you made it really difficult. I was one of the last call outs. Again, I'm just not a fan for, for various things and whatnot. But for, for you to get that call up, and, and that was a testament to everything about you, and also trust that. Because if you, you're playing in the lakes and big time games, you got to trust them. And you got to trust them. That's something that, that we really did and we really appreciate it. Uh, and uh, likewise, you know, you're doing great things, and we can't wait to see them. Very good. Okay, lastly, Isaiah Wall, Isaiah Wall, Isaiah Wall, Isaiah Wall, he didn't go to school, and he's, he's in our district, but he doesn't go to school in the, in the, in the Brooklyn Middle of Walls here. So, uh, a couple things about Isaiah. One, extremely hard work, he's too much, he's like, oh, yeah, he's, he's gotten, he's gotten because he's worked extremely hard. Uh, that's number one. Number two, it is like, no, stop, he's like, no, it's whether it's when you're an athlete, whether it's uh, going through the left side, and, the person who uh, moved in from the offseason and the big names, you know, in the position group because of that, Isaiah. Uh, I, I think so. Well, well, this is, I don't know if you're going to be pumped that this is what I'm thinking of about you, but I, I feel like this was said about you here at the banquet, too. But just tell us who you are and, and why you're successful, Isaiah, in, in our program and, and life in general. So, you have some guys that come from like Auburn or CCP classes, if they're off off-site and they got to get here. So they're driving from from uh, wherever they're coming from. So he was coming from, from off-site all the time as well and getting his rides and, and things. And, 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 and I would have loved to see certain intersection responses or whatnot because there's days he gets dropped out like he's cutting it so close to get here on time and to not miss a second of what's going on here. That the preparation that must have had to take place part two. Like he's he's stumbling out of the vehicle on the side here. Like there's a helmet on his head. So I'm just picturing going through certain intersections and, and then being able to stop and he's got like everything around him. Like, what is going on over here? And it was like, hey, and he was just like, no, I gotta get here. I can't be late. I can't be like, I can't, you know, the travel on you. You know, I gotta get after it and, and, and then leave me. And that's just. Something that is there. I mean, you've been such an important part of this program. I'm so pumped to have had you again. I mean, you know, a lot of you is getting uh, the, the four of you guys. Holy cow. Um, that's great stuff. So, you're all doing the great things and appreciate everything about you. And, um, you know, look forward to seeing what you're going to do in the future here. I see you. Thank you. Are you here? Okay, cool. And then even it's just easier to kind of stand up in front or whatever. Yeah, you gotta come up here. Stand up, stand Um. Uh, congratulations to everyone up here on the stage. Uh, Gabby D'Amico, I've had the pleasure in the past four years uh, to be her cross country and track and field coach. And truly that turns into that I've spent literally four years with her. I've spent her entire high school experience um, getting to know Gabby, watching her grow up to be the remarkable person that she is. I can remember I was telling her today, the first time that I saw her on the track, um, I was just standing there, didn't know anything about her, and I was like, you're gonna run the 800, and whoosh, she was fast. Uh, caught my eye, and the, the, the rest is just just history. 
Uh, this gal here has brought everything to our program through smiles, through laughter, through the sweetheart ropes over the years, the cat stories. Uh, such a hard worker. We've gone, we've, she's made tremendous growth. I'm not going to go through all the stats, but this guy, she hasn't even touched yet uh, her capability. She's heading off to uh, Mount here with most of the stage. Um, I went to John Carroll, so that's right, but that's all right. Um, and she's going to team up with a couple of gals that are there already, um, and it's she's going to fly. Um, I'm excited that she's going to be local, that we're going to together see the journey. Uh, but Gabby, it has been my pleasure and honor to be your cross and track coach. Best of luck. cross-country coach. Um, as you've heard, he's going to Lake Erie College to run cross-country and track. I know that saying trust the process gets thrown around a lot, but Evan truly embraced that. Even though his early years of high school were a grind for him, he became a late bloomer where he saw all of his hard work, time, and dedication pay off this year when he became a leader and a huge contributor on our team. If I could describe Evan in one word, it would be consistency. He's one of those kids that is reliable, comes to everything, and you know what you're getting out of him. One quick story I'd like to give about Evan came early in the season this year when we had a race at Bowling Green State University. As the runners reached about the two and a half mile spot on the course where I was standing, I yelled at him, you're number five, you gotta go. In cross country, for those that aren't familiar, which were probably most of you, the top five score. He looked at me with deer in the headlights, because he'd never been in this position before where he was a, con a contributor on the team. He finished and his time was not what he, he was hoping for and after, after all the hard work he put in over the summer. After the race, a coaching friend texted me, you need to get a number five. I replied back annoyed, yes, I know. That week, Evan and I talked and he said he had a talk with himself and he knew he was, he was holding himself back it was time to let go for his senior year with all the hard work that he had put in over the past three and a half years. The next week we were at Wooster. He had a breakout run, a race performance for him that was beyond expectations. After the race, I received a text from that same coach that said, congrats, you found a number five. With all that being said, I'm looking forward to seeing Evan take the next steps in his future at Lake Erie College, where he'll continue to hit his stride in the classroom and on the race course. All right, we're here to talk about Savannah Lorenzi here. Um, I have a very unique situation with uh, Savannah. I was just talking to Coach Ross back here about softball and realized the first time I got to coach Savannah was, I believe, in second grade at softball. And I know it's a lifetime ago to her, it's only a couple of years ago to me. Um, the things that stood out back then that stand up to this day is the motor in her. Uh, it's unlike pretty much any other uh, teammate I've seen of hers or even boys and girls sports. Um, as her teammates can attest to, when we go to practice, if they don't bring their A game, they know Savannah's going to blow by them and make them look silly. So every day in practice, she makes our team just so much better. Um, just a little quick story that relates to just this past weekend. In a basketball game against uh, Shark in here, Savannah got into foul trouble. And I sit her down on the bench, I go, you got to stop fouling. She goes, they're in my way, I want the ball. <laughs> I'm like, I understand that but you can't go through them. 
And so she got mad, she got to apologize to me later. Um, as I looked at those stats of that game there, she still finished with 31 points, 14 rebounds. She still dominated the game. That's the, the motor she brings in every practice, every game. So congratulations, Santa, and Kyle here. I just got to go to There's not much I could uh, say that I was going to say about Matthew. Um, but we're described as a few words as grit, level headedness, and dry wit. I've had the pleasure of coaching Matt for the past three years, from his freshman year all the way up into his uh, junior year in the varsity season. We'll be coaching him this spring um, as a pitcher for the varsity season as well. Um, I've taken great pride watching Matt grow as both a person and a player. He has uh, developed into a fine young man and is going to be a great ball player at the next level in Hiram. I'm excited to finish off this spring season at Riverside with him and watch him move on to the future career he's going to have. Right, Coach St. Clair is next. First, I'd like to congratulate all of our student athletes, um, their families, on their accomplishments today. Your hard work and dedication has paid off for you, and I wish you nothing but success as you go on to the next level. Kara Smith, or, I'm glad that the signing day was Wednesday because I hear that's your favorite day. Um, a little bit about Kara, she likes to tell jokes, she gives me great jokes every day at practice. And I've known her since second grade. Um, I was her principal at Hale Road, and she was a student there. And she's been playing lacrosse for us since seventh grade when we started our uh, first Riverside Youth Lacrosse team. And she was part of that group that's now seniors. And she fell in love with the sport of lacrosse. Um, and that time I've watched her grow, develop as a player, She's extremely coachable. And that's a trait, no matter what sport you play or whatever you do in life, if you're coachable, you're gonna be successful. Last spring when she came to me and she said, Coach, I wanna to go to St. Vincent College. I said, okay, where's that? She said, it's in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. I said, all right. So she went for a visit, met the coach, everything went well, and I'm happy that you are able to now sign with St. Vincent and Continue your education and, and play lacrosse as well. And what I really can't wait to see is that first collegiate goal celebration hop. When Kara scores a goal, she gets so excited she jumps in the air, and it's just great to see. Um, so congratulations, Kara. Field helps in that regards. 
Um, but she's also good at passing to her the teammates, whether it does lead to an assist or just moving the ball and keeping possession. I'm proud of the player that you become. Um, used to dance on my feet, and now you're going to go to college and stand on your own. Love you, buddy. Avis Lamp. Avis has been playing the in second grade. And that's crazy for a lot of us because we didn't really start playing lacrosse in this area. She was one of the first ones. Um, she played with Lake Erie Lightning. Um, I started watching her play in fourth grade when we joined that team as well. She understands the value of an assist. She is to a fault, a good passer who will forego scoring goals, because she could score goals if she chose to. But she also knows that, hey, if I don't have it, and this person's coming to the goal, I've got that assist. And in the cross, you get a point in your stat sheet if you get an assist or you get the goal. So she understands that completely. She's done a, a wonderful job. Last year, she overcame a lot of hurdles, hurdles to get on that field. And, uh, and I know it was a struggle. And I, the effort and work that she put in to get there and be there, I can't wait to see what the senior season is going to look like for you. And I'm happy that you are able to go on the team. And I want to wish all three of you young ladies nothing but the best. I'm going to come over to this side because this side of the room has had too much uh, spotlight. So, uh, plus, I like to be over here with, with, with my guy here. Uh, I want to reiterate uh, all of the other coaches have said. I mean, what a tremendous senior class that we have here at Riverside. Uh, phenomenal athletes, uh, a testament today, our, our previous signing day. Um, and, and I think Titchy here embodies that uh, 100%. I mean, here, here's a kid who, I would say to say, most of these kids up here have been playing their sport for a really long time. Braden started playing his sophomore year in high school. And from day one, you, you put a stick in his hand and you, he's going to go out and do special things. I mean, he obviously has grown a lot, but he's just such an athlete. Um, once the ball's in his stick, he's, he's running past just about everybody on the field. Um, you, you just want him to be out there all the time. He doesn't want to come off the field. Sometimes you got to drag him off the field because he's, he's such a competitor. Um, and I, I know he has learned so much in his two years of playing, going on three. Um, by the time, I, I can't wait to see what you do by the time you're a senior in college because uh, it, it truly is going to be special. Obviously, Mount Union is getting a lot of great athletes up here. Um, but one of the best ones, I think, is Braden Tishy. So, good uh, as Braden Tishy. Thank you. 